Hello, this is David Benign from Excel Consulting. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create table relationships in Power BI and what could typically go wrong. For example, getting a blank here um, because of a misspelling or someone that's not in both tables. So let's go into Power BI, shall we? So here I've got my model view in Power BI and Power BI often creates relationships for you, kind of like what it's done here. Now, a lot of the time, that's not what you want. I actually like to disable it. I go to File, Options, and Setting, and Options. It tries to guess if two things have the same name, then they must be related, but that's not always the case. Uh, for example, unique identifier keys and things like that. So you can sort of disable that if you go to the current file in data load, automatically auto detect new relationships after data is loaded. I tend to disable that. Uh, just to avoid things. You have to unfortunately do that file by file though. Here we're okay with what it's decided, but we often get our tables that go like this. So my advice is go to the modeling tab and try and drag it all into one view. Once you have that, then I tend to arrange them with the, the dimension tables at the top and the fact tables or the lookup tables at the bottom, sort of like this. Uh, and then city is sort of in between. So I put that sort of underneath and these ones I put sort of like that. And then I create my relationship. So there's two ways to do it. One is just drag and drop. So for example, city here is related to city in the concert data. So I can just drag one to another one. And it creates this one to many relationship with the filters flowing down. That's what the arrow means. And this is one, this is many. It's typical database way of setting it up. If you accidentally do the wrong one, like I'm going to drag city to country, it might create this. This is a one to one join, which is bi directional. This is normally not what you want. Um, I tend to avoid them unless you know what you're doing. And what you can do is you can double click it and then you can edit it. So I say it's country to city. And then this should compute as many to one. Um, keep the cross filter direction as single. Don't use both unless you really understand what it does because it could lead to errors. These other two options, I rarely see them used. So uh, they're not worth uh, getting to know that well. Um, all right, now what about, these are two fact tables, which means that um, they have duplicates in the rows for both. But actually, I see the word country in both. So I can actually drag country here to country here. And let's see what that does. So it doesn't give me an error. But it tells me the relationship has cardinality many to many. This should only be used if it is expected. And neither column contains unique values. The significantly different behavior of many to many relationships should be understood. So avoid this <laughs> unless you know exactly what you're doing. That's not what we want to do. But let me show you the other way of setting up relationships, which is in this manage relationships thing on the home tab. You can click new or edit. So let's say I want to create something between dim singers and the singers table, the singer costs. So there, this one to this one, it auto detected that that's it. That's okay. It gives you the preview, which I like the Excel version doesn't give you the preview. It does make it a lot easier with that. Let's create another couple here. Um, let's say we want to go from Dim Singers to the, the concert data. Again, Singer to Singer. So if it doesn't pre-select it, you can click on one to do it like that. You also have make this relationship active. You normally want to do that unless you have a reason not to, uh, which there could be. And I think we have one more to do, which is going to connect the countries table to the singers table here. So the singer costs only has data by country and not by city. So I link the countries like that. Press close and I've done all my relationships. Uh, and I tend to kind of move these around to make them kind of cross as little as possible. It's, it's rarely possible to make them never cross unless you have a very simple data model, but there we've got only one, which isn't too bad. Uh, 
So yeah, avoid the many-to-many, -many, avoid the bi-directional filter, and avoid one-to-one -one in most cases. Now, the other thing you can do, and I haven't quite got a live example here, but you can create multiple joins between two tables. So let's say, for example, for argument's sake, this was another date column that I wanted to link to date. It will create this dotted line, and this is an inactive relationship. I can click on it, and I can see that it's inactive. If I try to click this, it tells me I can't because there's already a relationship between the tables. And if I go to my manage relationships, I see this doesn't have a tick on it. I could, however, untick this and then tick this, and that would work, but I can't have them both ticked at the same time. This gets to be pretty common um, with a date table in particular. You often have something like a sale date and an order date, and that's the kind of thing you want to account for. So it's fine to have inactive relationships. You can activate them by using a function equals use relationships. And if you want to force a, a filter to be in both directions, you can use equals cross filter. Uh, both of these are inputs within a calculate function. I'm not going to go into that in too much detail, but that is something that you can do. So what happened here? This is something that can typically go wrong. So my dimension table has four singers. My concerts table has five, although actually one's a misspelling. But what that leads to, unfortunately, is that my dim table has this blank in the filters, and this is where it couldn't match it. So this is the equivalent of here. And that's where, effectively, this says Beyonce with two E's. Another thing you want to avoid is a similar capacity to that, but if there is a singer that is in the fact table, but not in the dimension table. So in this case, Adele has appeared in one table, but not in the dimension table. You want to definitely avoid something like this. This is where you try to make relationships between two things in fact tables. So there's no direct relationship between them because neither of them have unique values, so that doesn't work. So if I created a new visual and I had this and this one, this would not work. That's basically what that is. If you click see details, it's sometimes helpful. It can't determine the relationships yet. When you're picking fields to use in Power BI, always try and pick the lowest down dimension. So in this case, if you don't do that, you might get this scenario, which is repeated values for sales target. Because what I've done, and I'll replicate that for you now, I'm going to take city from the concerts data table, which is the lower one down, make that into a table. And then if I go to the dim cities dimension table and choose venue costs, I have this repeated number pattern. That's not what I want. What I want to do is I want to change this one to city from the dim cities table. Move that up there. And that way I can connect it to both things. So now I've connected it to sales and to venue costs, and neither of them have the repeated numbers. So this is what you want to do. Avoid the ones from the lower down tables. Um, yeah, if you have three levels, like here we had event, then city, then country, so that's okay as well. Always use the one from the highest table available. Otherwise, you could get into other issues with that as well. For example, this one has one above. So if I choose country, make that into a table, sales target, that'll be fine. Not, not repeating numbers. But if I then choose something from this one, That'll be repeated numbers there. All right, so that's table relationships uh, very briefly and what could go wrong with them. If you liked my video, please like and subscribe. I've got plenty more videos coming along and lots more to check out that are already live on my channel. Cool, well, thanks for watching.